Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Now, when it comes to theme parks, considering the word is literally in the title, one thing we often find missing in a lot of places is the theming itself. I guess we usually look to the United States when we think of particularly immersive experiences, but one place over here in the UK who are really getting it right nowadays is Paulton's Park, way down toward the south coast in Hampshire. Some of you may remember a particular all-hands-on-deck project a couple of years ago here in the studio, where we created numerous characters for the new Peppa Pig World ride theming. Very much a family-based park, we're now creating a little something for a more thrill-seeker side of the resort, the brand new to 2021 Tornado Springs. This new area of the park is based on a 1950s Midwestern American town, battered by storms and inspired by tornado chasers. We've been contacted by the Chairman of the Board and Commercial Director of Portons Park, Stephen Lawton, who's approached us with a piece of public-friendly theming for the gift shop entrance. No doubt the more astute of you may have already worked out what that something is. Of course, the front end of an old-style recovery pickup truck. So here we are blocking out the bulk of the shape from polystyrene. Uh, Liam? Yeah? It's a bit big. <laughs> Now one could ask, why doesn't someone simply purchase an old American banger, spruce it up and stick it in the shop? Well, you might find that the real banger would have real rough spots, rust and pieces of metal potentially flaking all over the place, and remember there's going to be a lot of small wandering hands in this shop. It might arguably cost more than a piece of sculpture as well. By the time you've purchased a vintage model, paid to have it shipped across from the US, having a piece of sculpture may just make sense, and here we can really tailor the size and functionality of the truck to the client's needs. And besides, Stephen knows that with simply buying a truck, it means no sculpture and no video for the YouTube channel, so he's really commissioned this with you guys in mind. So here we are creating something tailor-made. The shape is initially blocked out from our larger billets of polystyrene, and the front and side on peripherals simply mapped out using a projector. Handheld hot wires are used to cut the outlines, whereby we need to then map the lines back onto the shape again once this has been cut. You guys should know by now that we're very much in favour of creating by hand, as why should the machines have all the fun? So once the main form has been cut, it's going to be over to Aiden for the main bulk of the carving. Aiden first going over the form roughly, using a nail brush. This tool removes the material quite quickly, and when he's worked the shape down closer to where he'd like it, he begins to move to finer and finer tuned tools. Wire brushes, and later stonemason rifflers and sandpapers. Though we've got reference lines mapped out over the entire form, remember once you remove that top surface, you lose those lines, so it's always important for Aiden to reference the source material to make sure we're staying on track, or staying on truck in this case. Oh, here comes Aiden, the big bad boss, with his, uh, his laser level line. Look at this. Can't see anything from my glasses, eh? Well, it's been snowing, isn't it? So, you know. Uh -huh. Keep on trucking. Keep on trucking. Yeah. Aiden's got on and carved the front section, mainly the hood, which is going to raise so that uh, an internal tray can be placed for any merchandise that's going to go in the shop. The wheel arches, which is the widest part of the vehicle, and that's soon going to be a, a metal plate that's also going to be joined to the metal work running through the inside of the truck once it's all fiberglass. Currently sourcing a couple of headlamps something about seven inches in diameter, old-fashioned style headlamps with a chrome trim and we might dishevel them up so that they're in keeping with the rest of the truck but we'll see what condition they turn up in when they get here anyway. For us here at the studio, polystyrene is a fantastic medium for us to work from. It can be carved relatively quickly, it's light so you can move it around easily and you can add and take material away. Though it's messy in terms of it seems to get everywhere, it's still clean in the sense that you can simply sweep it up. We use a larger standard bead foam as opposed to a high density, so that when it comes to sanding something like this down, it's less fine dust that you have to worry about. You're probably more likely to end up chewing it than breathing it in, so in our well-ventilated area, it's the perfect material for us to use. We 
When it comes to circles and other geometric shapes, it's important to get these elements accurate, as it's immediately obvious even to the naked eye if something isn't quite right. Here Kevin's using a turntable to machine turn the wheels, as we're not going to be going for a wonky or flat tyre in this case. The hood of the truck is eventually going to be fixed in an open position, so the merchandise can be placed on the inside where the engine would be. This is another reason why it's probably best not to go down a real truck route, as you'd have to get someone to get rid of everything on the inside. Now that the master carving is nearing completion, we've invited the client Stephen Lawton down to the studio, so that he and Aidan can go through any last minute changes and amendments, and give the go ahead for the next stage of production. It's a perfect time to get everything like this approved, as it would be far more problematic trying to make any alterations later in the process once we get started on the glass fibre work. This project took place before the global pandemic, hence the lack of close contact mask wearing, and it's possible that Tornado Springs was due to open a little sooner had the pandemic not taken place. On the plus side, this has given Paulton's Park the opportunity to really go the whole hog and get everything ready to open for this year. Time for a little extra detailing now. So this is going to be a one-off piece of sculpture, no mould is needed for future cast replications, and we're going to be going over with what we call a blanket coat of glass fibre. We'll work the surface up to pretty much a car body finish, as this is technically a vehicle, and we'll dishever this with rust and deterioration later in the artwork. Oh that? You think that's the secretly sourced sticky back tin foil? Well you would be wrong in this case, that's a very thin aluminium foil which we're going on with a wallpaper paste. The wallpaper paste makes it so that it's easy for us to extract the polystyrene later on when we want to hollow out the fiberglass shell. We're going over with a Class O resin for fire rating for indoor use, and multiple layers of glass fibre for a nice sturdy shell. This way, if anyone is feeling brave enough to sit or climb on top, not that we're encouraging this type of ruffian behaviour of course, we know that the structure is sound. We're going to be installing metalwork inside this shell later on for extra rigidity, weight, and so that the shop fitters can secure this to the floor and the wall at the back. On to the more structural side of the project now. The fiberglass needs to be trimmed now that the resin is cured, and all of the polystyrene removed from the inside. The hollowing out of the space makes this more indoor friendly, as although all of our polystyrene is fire rated, it's one less thing to catch a light should the worst happen. The hollow space inside also makes it easier for us to install an electrical system for some headlamps later, more of that very shortly. For now, the team are working on getting the surface up to a much higher finish. We initially go over with flow coats of resin to help lose that fiberglass matte texture, and we then repeat the process of sanding car body fillers again and again, basically until the boss is happy, nothing less will suffice. There are only a couple of elements where we're going down a mould making route. One of which is the wheel, where we've had one master pattern made, we're creating a mould to exactly replicate the same on the other side, and here you can see Ruth laying up a cast in glass fibre. Once we've got the surface to a high enough standard, we go over with a grey primer. This gives the artwork a good base layer to then work on top of, and it also allows us to better see any areas that we think could use a bit more work before painting. 
The eventual finish of the truck is going to be a bright orange, so we've also used an orange pigment in the resin, so that should this ever get scratched, not only will this not really ruin the rough aesthetic anyway, but there's an orange layer at the base just in case. All of the paints we're using, including the grey primer, are a 2K car body paint for better durability. Right, what's happening here, Kev? Uh, we've got the truck in its two pieces and we've just potted it up together to join them because that's how it's going to be, a single piece. Uh, we're currently using clamps, as you can see down here. And we've got a couple of these on the inside, which is butting the two flanges together to keep it tight. Pinching it along there on the inside. Uh, later on we're going to use bits of lard and hot glue to kind of hold these in exactly the places we need. Then we're going to use resin and fiberglass to join it together. Might need to make a couple of amendments down these lines here to allow the fiberglass uh, to manipulate itself into the correct positioning so that when we laminate on the inside this is relatively smooth and much like a real truck would be we're going to be using car body fillers to make up the seam lines possibly adding a couple of seam lines where appropriate like the line just down there as these would have all been made in individual panels that's it The internal frame is made from a mild steel. We can create this in-house, amend it to fit the form exactly, and this is so the fiberglass body doesn't simply feel like a flappy panel shape if it's knocked or bumped into, but feels like a heavy, sturdy instalment. One thing we pride ourselves on here in the studio is the attention to detail. Little things like the inside of the hood, even though this is going to be above your head and hardly going to be a focus, and things like the hinges on the doors. All of these elements simply add to the quality of the finish, and it's just going that little bit above and beyond to make the work stand out. Aiden Hines himself. Do you want to, uh, yeah, baby. <laughs> do, you want, do you want to talk us through what's going on? No, go on, go on you talk. Oh, I'll talk I'll, then, alright, why not? So, uh, Aiden's not going to whistle on right here, he's just going to crack on. But what we're basically doing. Yeah, it's quite. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, you made your choice. Alright, go on in. Um, so, the windows are being airbrushed up so that they look like reflective glass, only a little bit more artistic as opposed to actual glass or perspex. Aiden's now going around with an airbrush, just dishevelling everything a little bit, highlighting all the deeper points, just so it's slightly more theatrical, as though there's actually a split line there when there's not. And uh, going around all the metal work, particularly, just adding all these little rusty elements. Once we've added all these little patches, we're going to send a progress shot to the client, and then Steve's going to confirm whether he's happy with the finish or if we're to add more and we're gradually going to build it up layer by layer and this will be better than going too overboard and then trying to pull it back we can simply keep adding until Steve's happy with the with the job and, and it, we've got it to where he'd like it to be enjoying yourself yeah I like this part you like this part very nice you haven't done this in a while have you you better not be rusty I'm not going to grill you too hard though <laughs> 
tired of your jokes. Ty. Oh. No more jokes. Otherwise, uh, we're like a little rabbit in the headlights. With the artwork finished, we've sent some photographs and a little footage for Stephen to approve, and Aidan is now sealing the artwork with the 2K lacquer. Final touches now, and we're once again calling upon the expert services of Simon Miller from a company called Cube3, down the road from us here in Essex. Simon's been putting together a system whereby the headlamps have their own individual power source installed inside the truck, and the staff in the gift shop can simply recharge the power when the theme park closes. Once again it's those final touches that just adds an extra dimension to the overall theming and for this sort of feature Simon is the perfect person for the job having worked for us on bespoke electrical systems in the past. So look at that. So that's fitting into the existing uh, socket? Yeah, okay. yeah, which is really handy. Yeah, very good. Right, here we have Simon inside the truck. Inside the truck. Hit it Simon! Oh, very nice. Yeah, I like that. Come and have a look. Oh, that's good. And nice and bright, and and it's yeah. quite bright in here, isn't it? Yeah, but they're not bright right in, in, in your face. Yeah, they're not directional. No, so the lens will be all right. Yeah, that's good. I'm, yeah, I'm pleased with that. That's still working out right. Well, they, yeah, they work well in the lamps, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not in your eyes, is it? No. So that's only five watts each. Right. That should last quite a while. Right. Tidy it up, Bill. Yep. Smart. Yeah, it's good. Well done, Simon. Where the battery is, and there's got a charger and a plug yep. down here, which which will drop down the front of there. That's perfect. Yeah. On off switch, and should be good to go. Should yeah. last 10, 10 days, I reckon. Yeah before recharging, but they could do it like every yeah, night. Yeah, weekly wanted, will be they? Yeah. Yeah. Here we have the bars. Got a thread on the bottom and a thread on the top. You push it up, you thread it in through this piece here, and you thread it through the top of the bonnet, just up here, and you put a nut on the top and that locks it down. And that should be stable, stable enough to hold it all together. That's it, jump in there. Yeah. There it is, I hope it all goes okay. Just need to buy an engine now. Our side of the work is done. Now it's off to Paulton's Park, way down in Hampshire, near Southampton. For the final shots of this video, we thought that a couple of finished photographs doesn't really do the whole project justice, and the sheer scale of the work that's been put into the entire area. So, we've got in contact with Sean and Charlotte from Theme Park Worldwide, a fantastic comprehensive YouTube channel for theme parks across the globe. I've left a link to their channel in the YouTube description below, so by all means check out their incredible content, and here you can see that we've been lucky enough to be able to see a sneaky behind the scenes peek, or rather, sneaky peek's a bit of an understatement, as Sean is often granted next to exclusive access to the backstage construction processes of projects such as these. He's also invited to the open day events, so you can see everything from construction to completion, so thank you very much to Sean and Charlotte for granting and allowing us access to your footage. As you can see from the video here, this truck is but a drop in the ocean, when you see the rest of what Tornado Springs has in store. Looking at the amount of work that we've put into just our side of the project, you can imagine just how much work goes into the whole area. I'm not just talking about the construction side, I'm talking everything from the concept, the design, artwork, planning, ride construction, everything from plumbing to electrical, branding, and overall the synergy of everything going on simultaneously. Nowadays, Paulton's Park is definitely a force to be reckoned with, broadening its range from not just a simple family park, but to be in a much more diverse experience, both in terms of ride intensity, as well as putting the theme back in theme park. It's been a particularly slow year on the work front, what with what's going on in the world, but it's fortunate that we've been able to make it through, not just in good health, but in good spirits that things are going to start picking up. The bulk of our projects nowadays usually involve corporate company exhibition shows, public art projects or theatre pieces, so it's nice to be able to get back into theming. 
we'd like to personally thank Stephen Lawton and his team for approaching us once more with the work, and we definitely look forward to more future projects now that lockdown is easing and the park is going from strength to strength. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and follow at Aiden Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.